What's going on, everybody? It's episode six of the Jabberknocker New Japan Pro Wrestling Podcast. I am Pegasus. I am Conway. I am joined, as always, by Dom. Dom, how are we feeling tonight? Uh, great. Feeling real good, Conway. Real good. good. We got some things to review. We got to go back a little bit. Some things have happened in the in the time between episode five and episode six. And we are going to be doing Forbidden Door. We are going to have a special guest, former jobber, uh, former fellow jobber knocker, contributive Joe. He usually handles the AEW stuff, but um, personal life got uh, got more important, which is the thing you should be doing. Personal life is way more important than this, this fucking show that hasn't been canceled yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we will yes. touch on Forbidden Door because it is right around the corner. So, but before mm. we get to Forbidden Door, or as you see in the title, Forbidden Snore, uh, maybe. I like uh, it. Yeah, I all right. like it. I before, like it. Before we get to that, we're going to recap <laughs> Dominion. Uh, and I think looking back at it, one, I, I think I was, I was almost 100%. On this show, uh, wow. likewise, I think nice job, I, I nice got job. I got Carl Anderson defeating. Glad someone, I'm Kong glad someone's Kong. good at fucking predictions. Hey, yeah. I can't do it for anything else, but I can. Do uh, it have you have you seen my? Yeah, it's, I'm a fucking I'm a nightmare. Uh, I think I uh, only got yeah. Shingo. Or I only got Carl Anderson defeating Tomatonga wrong. Um. I think I think I actually may have had Doc Gallows Doc Gallows beating Toro Yano, but I'm not. I still sure. watched the first half of the show, so it's fine. It's still it was done. kind of forgettable. Uh, Toro Yano versus Doc Wait, Gallows yeah, was yeah. fun to watch because anything with Toro Yano in it is fun to watch. Um, yeah, it was fine. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't the the. Yeah, the, the first four on the card weren't that great. Um, United Empire regaining mm, their IWGP like. Tag Team Championships against Bad Luck Folly. Chase Owens was great. I'm so happy for that. Um, then Shingo Takage versus Taichi was a fun match. Came down right to the wire. Um, Shingo pulled out eleven uh, with a one. score of 11 to 10. Um, Will Ospreay. Oh, that, yes. That was a pretty cool concept. Yeah, the, cause, Sorry, so every count. Yeah, that was fun. That was the first time. I've, that was the first time I've watched a match like that. Yes. Yeah. So it, I thought that it, was well, very it, cool. they they just start like that was that was an idea from Shingo's head like that. That's what the King of Pro Wrestling Wait, so title. Has that, has that match been done before? Or was that a first time? Uh, they, that, did like they, did they did it before. They did it before, but it was a to the first okay. one to thirty. Um, so, um. So it just took a little longer. Uh, that's why gotcha. this match was a 10-minute mm -hmm. time limit, and that was it. Um, and they were going the I full I really end. enjoyed that. Yeah, it was great. It was a good job. And that's what the King of Pro Wrestling title is meant to do. It's supposed to – it's one of those things in wrestling that is very corny and very can be very jokey. But if done right, like they did with, with uh, at Dominion, it's a very good championship. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to mm -hmm. see what the next show brings and um, what type of stipulation Shingo and what it, whoever is facing him will bring to the table next. Um, Carl Anderson winning his first never open weight championship, defeating his young boy Tamatanga. Uh, I did not see that one coming. I thought Tamatanga would overcome Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. Um, and I was. New Japan has a history of doing this where they give somebody a belt and then give it to somebody else and kind of play hot potato with the belt. Um, and it's not even like a back and forth. It's you. It's sometimes it's between three or four people, um, gotcha. and that's frustrating. So what happens to? What do you think? Uh, where does Tama Tonga go from here? Like, what, what is your thoughts for him? He, I mean, now he, that the title's he's, off him, and... he's re revving up for the G one. That's really it. That's okay. where we are. He can't really do much till the G one's over. or... Or um, so well, that's right. I think you had said that last week too. You're looking for a big outing out of him this year. Yeah, he's he's one of the. Oh, that's yes. the other thing we'll cover too. We'll cover the G1 because the blocks got announced. There are four wow. blocks for the G1, and they are stacked, my guy. They are absolutely loaded. Positively stacked. Loaded. Um. Yeah, those and, graphics are wild. So it's, yeah, it's they really, do. Yeah. New Japan does a good job on the graphics. But, I mean, when you want to understand, like, talent-wise, where New Japan is at right now, and just, just look at the four leaders of those blocks. Like, what are we doing here? It's fucking awesome. So, yeah, the, the really yeah, exactly. The, um, you yeah. know, the, it's absolute. oh, my God. I looked, at, I saw the block announcements, and I was just, I was kind of stunned. Bring those up. Because I wasn't sure. I if I have them. I don't. I wasn't sure who was going to be where, and um, I I was just like, when when you when it was, it's twenty eight people I think one two six seven yeah twenty eight people seven people per block, like I, th it's crazy. It's absolute craziness, and we've got a. I saw some. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to bring day. it up now. I got. I pulled it up. Okay. Um. Um, yeah, I have it here too. I uh, when I saw I saw a statistic the other day, it was something like we're getting twenty eight or something like that first time matchups in this G one. Wow. And like That's fucking sick. If you just but if you just like real quick, if you just look at block A, Tom mm -hmm. Lawler, Jonah, uh these are their first G one, so all those block matchups for essentially your first time. So I, I have the I have the matchups in front of me, not the actual people in the blocks. That's what I, I have the blocks in quick. front of me. So okay, and I have the matchups. So, but like, Great Ocon, this is his first G one. So like, a lot of those might be first times. Um, Juice Robinson, this is his first G one. This is El Fantasmo's first G one. I think this is That's Dave Finley's first have for G one. Wow. What that I got that right? Where, where is Japan Nostradamus? <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, Juice. Where is he land right now? I mean, we can get into it, but he's announced for the G one. Has he even made mention of this? Like, has he been loud about it? Because we all heard so, what happened with the U.S. title. So okay, so that's the like, thing. Is, is... I, I was kind of biting on it. Like, obviously, it's like, like oh, they kind of do blur the lines. I mean, obviously, it's it's a you know, it's part of what's going on, but New Japan kind of does this better than anyone else, in my opinion. Yeah. When they're gonna pull shit like this, you know, like well, it, pulling them, pulling them off the card, like making that match, making that match, the, the the title match, like before the bell rings, that that was fucking awesome. So that's the thing is like, that's to me, that's the difference between the American and European fans to the Japanese fans is that. There's a lot of – it's called the internet wrestling community for a reason. Um, and it's mostly in America and the UK where a lot of people are in the know. Maybe not to a certain full extent, you know what I mean, uh, but they're, they're constantly on dirt sheets. They believe in Dave Meltzer. They're reading the torch. You know what I mean? There's a lot of resources to pull the curtain back in America. 
Whereas in Japan, right. it is very much um, not. It, it's more of a. It's more treated like a real sport. If it is, if, if you it, ever, but watch they don't the, overdo it. They don't overproduce it. They don't like force it down your throat where you're like, uh, I know what's going on here. Like I know what's going on, but I don't know if I really know what's going on. If that right. makes sense, you know, like Right. And and like yeah. I've said this before, if you were to flip the camera on those backstage interviews, you're gonna see mm-hmm. like a just pile of reporters. Cause right. wrestling gets reported in its own it ha- there's like a few different magazines. They treat it like sports. Exactly. That you go, you like, sp- like back- sports over here. Like, it, right. It's a po- it's a post game press conference for the NBA Finals for MLB. Like that's how it's right. That's how it's set up over there, and that's how it's treated. And it's not treated right. like I don't want to say an iPhone, but yeah, like like wrestling, like sports, right. and it's not treated like sports entertainment. Right, and right. that and that's one of the things I've very much enjoyed about AEW is that they do those back, they do those after show pressers. They don't do those it. Are fucking in- incredible, man. They don't do it how I would like them to do it or prefer them to do it, which would be the New Japan way is after your match, you sit down and, you, and you're you with the, the, the reporters. The but at the same time, the you kind of can't because the reporters are reporting on the full show. They don't have that, that mm-hmm. time to do it. It's just uh, with Japan, because it's treated like major league sports over here, you have those people who are who are assigned to watch the show and you have those people who are assigned to get the backstage comments. Um, Mm -hmm. Whereas they, I think on, on YouTube, AEW calls it the media scrum. So like they're pulling some people, I think the last one, it was just CM Punk and Tony Khan, but like in the past they've pulled, like they've done like five or six people and it, that's great. And I love that that AEW does that and I, I think it's great that new japan does it and new japan has always done it and will remain to do it and it's a tra- and it's not even just new japan all japanese wrestling promotions do it because they want because again it's that real life sporting feel to it so when you so when you look in or so when you do that with juice robinson where he has his real life appendix surgery needed, but he has the United States Championship in his in, in his own. Like he has it, he has possession of it, and then you he had possession of it. That was that was the thing, right? Right. So now you have Osprey versus um, Sonata, which was a great match, mm-hmm. and Osprey goes over, winning his first United States title, and he's he only needs now the G one to win. And he's accomplished everything as a singles competitor that you can accomplish. And so like now you have, but now you have the G1 coming up and Will Ospreay and Juice Robinson are in different blocks. Will Ospreay's in block. um, He's in block. Oh, sorry. They're in the same block. They're both in block D. So is their first matchup? A U.S. title match, because like oh, is so it... you can do that in the tournament. You can no, belt no, no, me on no. the line in the tournament. No, no, oh. not at all. But what I'm saying is, is that because Juice Robinson has the physical belt, but Will Osprey is the recognized champion, how we have to wait till the G1 essentially, because uh, there might be there might be one or two shows coming up. But I don't even think that's right. I think they're just going right into the G1 after Forbidden Door. So uh, I don't know. It looks what like it starts on July July 16th is what I have here. Yeah, so they're going to do uh, Forbidden Door. July Dorming. 16th, Okada versus Jeff Cobb. Yeah, what? which is around. Will, which is Will around, Ospreay versus Phantasmo. Oh, they're doing Osprey versus Phantasmo first? Okay, that's good. July 16th, Okada, Cobb, Sonata, White, Tana, Tanahashi, Aaron Hanare. Yep. Will Ospreay Fanta- Phantasmo. Okay. That's July 16th. That's, That's how they're bad. kicking this thing off. What is it? Jay White Sonata, you said? Jay White and Sonata. Yeah. Oh, so wow. you got Okada, fun. Jay White, Tanahashi, and Osprey the first fucking day of the tournament on, yeah. on the card. It's a stacked. Wow. It's a stacked. 
All right, but before we get to the G1, Sorry. before we go yeah. down that rabbit hole. I well, know, I just uh, saw it. I just got real fucking excited. No, that's fine. Uh, G1, G- here's the thing is we are now in my favorite time of the year when it comes to New Japan. This is like your March Madness for me. Like, yes, exactly. When March hits, when March and April hits, like you got March Madness, you get baseball open up, you get WrestleMania. Like that whole time frame is fucking awesome. So I know your excitement for what's about to happen. And here's I'm a, fucking here's thrilled Here's the you. other thing too is, is that – the G1 is so grueling for the wrestlers, but unless you're so invested in the G1, it's a grueling watch. You know what I mean? Because it, it's yeah. we're getting four and five, four to five G1 matches probably a day. Uh, some probably full card. I mean, the Super Juniors card. was tough, right? And like yeah. you, it, the thing too is is like, but tough in a good way. Like I wanted to watch it, but it's like wow, it's a fucking lot. Right, and the other thing too is, is like, it's really B block and beast B- and block C that I think this, uh, maybe a little bit of block D too, but like I think block A is so stacked, um, but like just real quick, like it's the same with the best of the super juniors, when you have Yujiro Takahashi taking on Dave Finley, you're like. Well, this has no repercussions on the final standings whatsoever. You guys are just fighting okay. to see who's not last. You know what I mean? That's that's mm. the grueling part of this is that is watching all those matches, even the ones that you might deem uh, un or insignificant. Throw, throw away matches. Yeah. Mm. So, but like to take the G one in as a whole is just it, it's yeah. You're right. It is my favorite type of year. Uh, but the main event of Dominion was Kazuchika Okada walking in as IWGP World Heavyweight Champion, taking on his new bitter rival, his new thorn in his side, his new weakness, the Switchblade, the catalyst of professional wrestling. He's the reason that we have AEW. Jay White. King Switch. He... He is the reason we have AEW. Did you Expand listen on that on. for a second? Did you watch his after match promo? Oh, no, just because that's what he said. Because that's what he's saying. Okay, he's, the, uh, probably the, that. I don't. In the in the back the backstage interview after, I don't know how you. Yeah. I I don't understand how people don't get switch what switchblade. I don't understand uh, why people I, I don't it, like man. switchblade. When you watch the match and then you watch the those promos, I don't. I don't get it. I don't get how you don't see this guy and go, that's a million dollars in my pocket as a wrestling promoter. Like he is, he is such a great asset to, 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 um, uh, new Japan. And, Oh, I mean, yeah. Like he's he's the the best thing on the company. He's the, he's, one of the top three heels going today and he's one of the top three wrestlers going today um wow i don't i i again just watch him watch the backstages watch all that i don't understand how you don't think that jay white is at the top of the wrestling game right now i don't don't understand it he's he has sprung me man he has he really has he's He's you say he's very important to everything that's going on. He's the key component in this AW AEW New Japan thing because you know it's not going to be Okada or Tanahashi. So Jay White is the most important component right now. And but he's stepping up and everything he says, it's like, oh shit, this kid's a this kid's a fucking badass. And he's a dickhead and he makes you believe it. And he backs it up in the ring. I didn't think he could back it up in the ring. That was my that was my thing with him. When I was like, is he that good in the ring? And he he is. He's pretty fucking good, man. So, he, yeah, him and I'm, with, I'm with you on all that. 36 minutes. And I was in for 36 minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they, I, I was invested mm-hmm. for 36 minutes. I just think that there's a contingency of people who are just like, ah, I don't get Switchblade. I don't get it. Why? I, there is. And I'm like, there absolutely to, is. You have to watch him wrestle. You have to watch his backstage stuff. And the other thing, too, is. And like I have, that, I'll, I'll go into this later when we talk about Moxley and Tanahashi. Mm-hmm. I think Jay White in AEW so far has been very 
um, toned down and chill. Yeah, compared to the shit he's doing and saying in New Japan, he, he definitely is. He's in like he like he's in overdrive in New Japan when he comes to AEW. He's more of I don't want to say cruise control, but he's more like a, a fourth gear. You know, like he's not and he's I, not re, he's not redlining like he is in New Japan. But I, I think they might be building to that, and they're probably waiting for him to meet up with Omega for him to turn it out. So that's what I was about to say. I, I agree with you. I think he is holding back. So at Forbidden Door, he, he gets on. Un- he shows his colors. You know what I mean? I think they're whole. He's kind of like playing it low. No, you're gonna say it. he was gonna get on. Unle- he was gonna get unleashed. Yeah, yeah I like that. He was right, gonna unleash so him. Yep. Mm-hmm. Forbidden Door is, is building up. Uh, so but. Real before after Dominion, we had a few road shows. Uh, actually, hold on before we get to that. You saw you watched the main event, right? Of Dominion, yes, yeah, yeah, I watched it. Okay, what did you think? I watched the last three, uh, it was fucking awesome. From what I remember, I mean, uh, it kicked up, it was it slow going a little bit, yeah, it was pay, yeah, it like, started like it was like it was like a tail, it was like a tail of two halves. Yeah. It was like a tale of two halves, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, once they got going into the second half of that match, it was fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, but I haven't so, I haven't watched it since that day. I've watched it once after. Uh, I want I watched it okay. um, Tuesday, and um, I because I kept because I'm a sucker for backstage promos and and I'm a sucker for promos. So like Jay White, I've watched that. I've watched that backstage interview a few times. Um, and uh, so I wanted to watch the match again because I've watched the promo so many times. And it's just it's just so good. And it, it's not even their best match either. That's the thing. It's like they did that. And then I, I, just wa- I just go, that's not their best one. You know what I mean? And that's scary, I think, is that when you – when you tear the house down like that and somebody can go, well, that wasn't your best one that you did. You know what I mean? I think there's a lot of wrestlers right now that have those cases. Wait, wait, what are we those in, opportunities. What are we in store for with these two? Right. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 all right. Before we get to my thoughts about G1, because I have some concerns, um, after Dominion, there was a few um, road to G1 shows that New Japan did, and they weren't m- notable for the most part. There was only three things that really stood out, uh, and one of those being United Empire, uh, Francesco Akira and TJP defeating uh, Master Wado and uh, Taguchi, six or nine, for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champions. So the United Empire now has control of the United States title, the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, and the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championships. Um, and so that match was really good. Not Actually, it wasn't really good. It was good. It was good. It was a good match. Um, uh, it, it wasn't really noteworthy as a match. Like, it was a good watch if you have New Japan World and you want to see some good tag team wrestling. That was a good match to watch. But it wasn't, like, groundbreaking. I expect more coming for the United Empire. Um, so, and I think that's, and I, it's one of those things where, like, in my head, there's, like, oh, the house, the WWE house shows are never really, it's one of those things where the the matches aren't really good. It's everything else they do that's really good. Um, so I think like when it comes to this, they kind of held back a little bit, even though it was a title match. I don't know. I just I feel like if it was on Dominion or or Sakura Genesis or Wrestle Kingdom or whatever, it would be better. Um, it, it feels like they're trying to build up United. Uh, United Empire more on AEW now. Like all of them stepping up on the apron on Wednesday night, I felt that was pretty cool. I was like, okay, I like they're finally starting to give them a little. Even though they back down to FTR's music, which all all due respect to FTR, like when their music hit, I was like, 
that's that's what's gonna pull you guys away. Like that music hitting an FTI hitting the ring. Like I I get at the hills and they get a and they get a retreat, but I don't know. It, that that kind of bothered me, but to see them jump up on the apron and have that that visual of all them standing there, like, "Hey, we're here now, and we're standing up to you guys." Like, I don't know. I kind of always love that. It brought me back to like when the Shield and the Wyatts first did it. You know, yeah. like obviously not on that level, but that was the that was the look they were going for, and I thought they got it. I thought they missed a little bit, but it was nice to see them give United Empire that. Yeah, we're, we're gonna stand up to you and let you know we're we're in your building right here. So I thought that was good for them. Yeah, New United Empire just keeps getting stronger week in, week out. And it and there's gonna be a point where's where TJ can. where's TJP? He just he's in Japan. He just won the tag belt with Akira. So they were in okay. Japan. Gotcha. Um, doing those shows. Um the other thing notable from those road shows, um it's hard to call it a missed opportunity because obviously I don't know about um um, non no compete clauses and airfare and all that other crap. But Kushida returned. We have the return of the golden boy of New Japan. Kushida made his return after Tai Chi Shimori took down their three-time IWGP Best of the Super Junior Champion Hiromu Takahashi, and that match was really good. And it's what you expect out of those two. Um, I now fully believe that Taichi Ishimori is the greatest junior today and probably of the last 15 years. Um, wow. If, if you look at his career throughout NOAA and New Japan, it's, it's, it's insane to look at. Um, he's so good, and I think that he has been quietly the he's been quietly the best for a while and i think beating beating hiromu was a big deal for him um career wise because when did this th- when did this take place when or where ready be no where like when the show was it uh it was just um hold on i'll pull i'll find it uh, was it this one? Was it like those? Yeah. It wasn't those it New happened. Japan strong shows they do. Right? No, no, no. Like, those are only that? America. Okay. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, okay. New Japan Road. Um, it happened on the twenty first, so two days ago. Wow. Uh, they went thirty six minutes and twenty seconds. And, and you find that on New Japan. New Japan yep. Road on the website. Yep. Like, okay. Just that like same that. show they had um, the um, All Atlantic Qualifier Finals. Uh, Clock Connors lost it tight to. Ty- to uh, Tomoharu Ishii. I I won't lie. I was hoping Clock Carners won, um, but I understand why they went with Ishii. He's more of a New Japan name than Clock Carners is. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought that here's the thing. When it comes, we'll get into it a little bit. But just real quick, when that bracket got revealed, I was like, oh, Miro's winning this. Um, so I thought it was just like, oh, you can New Japan just throw whoever there. It doesn't really matter. Um, but they've put in a great name in there, somebody who's loved by the the American fans in Ishii. So um, it's definitely going to be a good match. But that was also that show, too. So okay. those are the real the the other notable thing from the Kushida return is that um, he's going to be moving to LA and flying over to Japan uh, for every show he's on. Um, He'll probably stay for a tour, but he'll be he primarily primarily will live in L.A. Um, so we'll probably see him on New Japan Strong uh, maybe more often. Um, cool. The other thing too, he addressed the rumors that he was going to not only move up to the heavyweights but also join Bullet Club. Uh, he denied both those rumors. He said he is a junior and will stay a junior. I think that's the best move for him because not only do I think he could he I think he could do well in the heavyweight but I think that he needs to he could be that junior heavyweight um competitor who occasionally does never open weight stuff and kind of bounces back and forth um so I'm not excited for Kushida's return cuz I don't like Kushida but that's just me personally. I think it's a good boost 
for the junior heavyweight division that didn't need it, in my opinion, but I think that that's me thinking that you have the talent there, you just don't want to push it. Because gotcha. the, the thought is, is like the, the top four in the, the junior heavyweights right now are El Fantasmo, El Desperado, Hiromu, and Tai in um Tai Chi. Or not Tai Chi, um yeah, Tai Chi Ishimura, sorry. Um mm-hmm. so like adding Kushida, not only do you get a fifth, but like <laughs> you can kinda mix and match and try to develop show or yo, even Master okay. Wado if you want to waste your time. Gotcha. So but that's it. That's it that's real big on new japan stuff like outside of forbidden door and all that stuff but the other thing i want to talk about let's jump into your realm of the the pool your end of the pool right now let's talk about slammiversary oh i was just bringing up as you're saying that yeah because i i love old tna i really Mm -hmm. do like when the x division was big i loved it um because i was a wcw cruiserweight guy so to this yep. so x division was great i like it up until so that was like that was like aj styles like christopher daniels like Mojo, shit like that right? sanjay Dutt, Mojo, yeah the naturals amw triple okay. gotcha. x loki all that stuff um Love it. so but the other thing is that uh it was up until right when Hogan really took control as an on-screen personality that I kind of was just like, all right, I'll see. I'll just see myself out. Thanks guys. I'm, I don't blame I'm you. Done. Right. You know, what's coming. Um, yeah. I, I wasn't, yeah, there were, there just got to a point where I was just like, I, I'm all set. We're now you know, we're, we don't need WWE light. Right. It, it was like, yeah. I'm all, I'm all no set. Need. And they were so good at doing their own thing stuff. too. That, so that's where I came into TNA, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, I didn't watch it at the beginning. I was kind of falling out of wrestling at that uh, a little after. So we came back around like 2012, and that was the shit that was going on. I think AJ was the champ, maybe, or Saban, and AJ was there. I didn't hate any of that, I guess. But So that's where I kind of came into TNA, just so you know where I'm at. I really liked Bully Ray. I, I think he's one of the... Uh, Billy Ray's run was heels. fucking awesome. Yeah. I think that's yeah. one of the best heel runs in wrestling. Um, oh, but yeah. It doesn't get enough credit. Agreed. But I was watching... I, I'm not going to lie. I was watching Slammiversary for you cause, so we could talk about it. Um, cool. Cause I, the, cause, but at the same time, like I would have watched clips and whatever Twitter or TikTok threw at me from that event. Um, but I wanted to watch it as a whole, and uh, I I popped so hard for the AMW return. So like two or three seconds before their music hit, I was mm-hmm. like, they were kind of like in the ring. I was like, who are we gonna get? A- I I like jokingly was like, who are we gonna get? AMW, and then right. their music hit, and I lost it. Absolutely awesome, lost dude. it. I loved AMW and like they when, were when that happened. such a good tag team. So I came in, I didn't get to see much of this stuff. I saw more like uh rude in uh storm. So I have to go back and find their shit because like the, their, I hear it's fucking awesome. Their matches with triple X are so good and like they their six sides of steel match was amazing. Elix Skipper walks the cage into like this weird Tower of Doom thing. Like, it was absolutely bonkers, and like watching it real life first time was incredible. And then re- every time I've rewatched it, it's been insane. Cool. Um, seeing AMW was great. Um, it, it, all the everyone they brought back I thought was great. Um. The only thing I didn't like, there was a few things I didn't like about the show, but um, my favorite wrestling match. What did you like? No. So my Thank favorite you. stipulation yeah. is the King of the Mountain match. I absolutely love the hell out of that mm-hmm. match. 
Um, I hated Mickey James in that match. Like she was so all over. The she place. was a special enforcer, right? Yeah. yeah, but she was so all. I think over I the come place. in during this match. Yep. Like she ahead, was so all over the place. It wasn't even funny. Like she got involved and threw out Tasha Steele's heater, which was fine. But then, like two seconds later, she's helping Mia Yim up, and like, I was like, I was like, I understand like throwing the heater out, but you can't then go and help some. Like she was just okay all over the place. I was like, this is this is old, t- <laughs> this is old TNA yeah. right here. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I think I came in. That was, might have been the first match I watched live time. Was that one that went, when when they went off the ladders? Yeah, into the tables. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw a lot of people complain. I saw a lot of people complain about Mickey James in that match, but it really didn't register to why the fuck she was even there. But then I found out she was a special enforcer because I was literally just watching this just to watch it. Like I wasn't, you know, what I mean, like I just wanted, like I want to watch some. Just I, I like impact like that. Like I enjoy watching impact just to watch it and enjoy it and not think too much about it. So some of the shit that was going on in that match was fucking wild, but that spot sticks out. Um who won it? Jordan Grace? Yeah, Jordan Grace won it. Which they, they finally with. ran with Grace, right? It's about time, man, because like what are we doing with her? They gave her the digital mid- media championship, and it's like she might be the best female on the roster. I mean, oh, Tasha Steeles is awesome. Tasha oh, Steeles is awesome. Deanna Perrazzo is awesome. Chelsea Green can fuck off. Mia Yim is. She can hey, fuck off. I used to. I used to be with WWE, so people might watch this match because oh, there's someone from NXT that I see. Like that's the only reason why I feel like she was she in there. Can, I'm not a huge Mia Yim fan, but she can. She can go. Yeah, screw. Jordan Grace is bad fucking ass. I'm glad they finally ran with her. Yeah, I um. I, I said the night of, I was like, Jordan Grace is everything uh, Tessa Blanchard should have been. Um, and I think everything t- t- Tessa Blanchard wow. got should go to Jordan Grace. I think she's better than Tessa Blanchard, bar none. Um, I don't like Tessa Blanchard at See, all. See, it's funny you said that because I thought, I get it. Well, uh, yeah, I, I guess I get that. But I thought Deanna, Deanna Perrazzo was her replacement. Like, I thought when they looked at Deanna, they were like, okay, you're our new um, Tessa Blanchett. Yeah. So that's what I always saw out of her. But uh, she nice is – you're right. But you're right. No, Grace is more of – she's legit. Like, even Perrazzo bothers me sometimes. Like, she kind of half ass a lot of shit sometimes, and I, I don't know. It's like – but Jordan Grace is a hundred and fucking ten percent – Every time out, and she is just a physical fucking specimen. And there is nothing that woman can't do in the ring. She's fucking awesome. If people don't watch her, they probably fucking should. So um, that's that's my take on that match. Seeing Shark Boy it was so fun to me. I und- I didn't I didn't see it till after because <laughs> I didn't, I didn't see, see a pre-show. But like, I love sh- <laughs> I love Shark Boy. Even before he he adopted the Stone Cold gimmick to his character, I I yeah. loved it. Uh, and that was about? weird. Where that happened? That was Didn't a pre-show. They have some, like, reverse Battle Royal. I don't know. That was a that pre-show was, match. Was reverse Battle Royal. Oh yeah, it was a Reverse Battle Royal. Okay. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I don't even know where he showed up. He showed up in that. He was out, but I did, again I didn't watch it. I just saw that's what it was. Right. Okay. Um, what did you think yeah. of Ultimate X? So it went to again. I rewatched that because I didn't catch it live, and I was pissed because it opened the show, right? Yeah, it opened the show, and they went with Mike Bailey. Yeah, win that fucking match. He did, right? Sucks. Yeah. I hate that. I mean, between Kenny King, Alex Zane, Ace Austin, uh, Jack Evans, all set, and Trey Miguel, anyone but Jack Evans and Mike Bailey. I was fine with winning that match. I'm not a huge Kenny King guy either, but like I get it at least, you know, like he belongs in there. He Mike Bailey, I just he sucks. He's overrated. He's not like I don't want to say he's not good, but like what is he? What is what does he do better than anyone else that people just keep giving him all this love and praise? Like Mike Bailey, speedball is the greatest thing on slice. He just wrestled fucking John Moxley at GCW. Yeah. What? Yeah, what? He come on, bro. So- like I, is it me? 
No, I, well, maybe, but at the same time, like, I don't, I'm not a fan of Mike Bailey because, like, he, I watched a lot of his PWG stuff. I watched a lot of, like, okay. other independents of him. And, like, again, he just, just like you, just didn't do it for me. Just, I, I it's not that I don't get it. He just doesn't do it for me. So it's like, I get it. I get it, but there's, the, like, there's people out there that do it, this, do it so much better than him. Right. Like, what does so, he do better than everyone else that does right. that shit? Right. And the other thing, too, is just like, you, like, I didn't, I, I kind of, ho- I was kind of glad Isaac Zane and Ace Austin did a little bit. I wish they did a lot more. I was That's, kind of upset. Was my, that was, my next, that was where, my next take, right? I was kind of upset in the beginning where it was just like, all right, bell rings, and everyone's like, if I'm Alex Zane, I'm going right for Beeline. Ace yeah. Austin, Beeline him. So, like, the fact that, like, they only did a little bit kind of makes me hope that they do more coming up. They didn't really touch on it, even on commentary, did they? Like, I I guess I I watched it once. They made, like, a It wasn't a focal point, a light point, right. It was really strange that... It's kind of hard in that match because there's so much going on. There is, but when you... He was the last one to get added, and, like, that should have been the... If not the first focal point, second or third, I don't understand what else is really going on in there. You know, right. I mean, Ace and Trey, Ace and Trey have had a long history, and I get, I could see them going at it for most of the night. That's cool, but and then having Zane kind of like work his way through it, you know, kind of like you fucked me. Now I'm gonna fuck you every time you get a shot. I right. didn't see any of that either. Right. Like climbing up to the ladder, like pulling them off. Not like I don't yeah, know, really strange that, shit there. So that, it was yeah. this was a little bit of a miss. This was a miss for me. Yeah, one hundred percent. What were your thoughts on the um, women's tag match? I know you had some thoughts on that. I don't think. Okay, just the end. Um, this is me. I always kind of like look into shit like this, and I, I probably shouldn't. Did you when they when they finally won? Did you notice like Rosemary was a little cold towards Tyre? Like I know I understand that's kind of what's going on here, but a little more so than. Uh, a story angle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like no, she was, saying. when I they didn't... hit the ropes. T- yeah. I, I don't know. I Ty was like, like, she even went to like, Good. I did notice that like, uh, I think Ty was like, uh, on the ropes celebrating. And then like, mm-hmm. Merce, uh, and then, um, Rosemary, uh, Rosemary was just like, Oh yeah, I should be doing this too. And then started to climb, and then they cut away. You know what I mean? So I, yeah, I get what you, I understand what you're saying. But I think and that's like kind I get of it, the like dynamic that, they're yeah. going for. But at the same time, they I, did a really I good job of making it look legit. They did a really good job because she like Taya went to go like put her hand out for her like to like raise her hand, and it was like she like no sold it. It wasn't even like don't do that. I don't know. It was really strange. So I think it might have been a little bit of hey, I did this while well. you you took off for of greener pastures. And now I'm here and like, give me the, let me, let me shine here. And don't even think about stepping in my spotlight. That's what I took from Rosemary in that post-match celebration. If it was done purposely great, but if there was some real shit going on there and I don't know, it came off pretty real to me. So good job either way. Uh, What did you think of Monsters Ball? Uh, That was Moose and Sammy Callahan. Yep. Dude. So anytime these two get put together, right, I'm like, oh, they just throwing them together because Sammy came back. They had this awesome stuff with him and Eddie Edwards going on, and it was some of the best stuff I've watched in Impact since re-watching it since the summer of 2020, you know? And I just love both those guys and that whole chemistry and dynamic they have. So when Eddie – I'm sorry, when Sammy broke his ankle and then they did the turn with Eddie, which really didn't lead to much of anything with Honor No More, it's like – Shit, like what's gonna happen when Sammy comes back? Like that was my big intrigue. Like I kind of not that I fell off, but like definitely lost some interest after that story of broken up because of the injury. And they came back and they throw him in with Moose, and I'm like, fuck, like that's their go-to every time with this kid. Like him and Moose, and they'll go at it and they'll tear it down. So I went in with very low expectations, and it I'm not a hardcore match type guy. Like it, it has to be just hit the right spot and done well, not overdone, not sock. Like it could go so bad so quick. It could just be a pile of dog shit the whole fucking time. 
And whenever Sammy's involved with this shit and Moose gets up for it, everything they did was fucking awesome. And Sammy taking the tax and keeping his shirt on, I was like, oh, I was like, you know, like kind of sucks to say as a fan, but like that visual kind of sucks sometimes. Yeah. But as the as the tax were like popping off the back of his shirt, I'm like, yo, that's sick. Like, you know, it's in there. Right. It looks his back was splashed with fucking tax. So, you know, they're in his back like you. I don't know everything, man. Everything about that match. I couldn't even tell you who won it now that I think about it. <laughs> you know, like it was that's how good that match was for me. That these guys just beat the fuck out of each other. It looked good, it looked legit. And um I that was maybe my favorite match on the card. And it I had no intention of it being that. So Callahan won, which okay. I was happy with. <laughs> so yeah. but here's the other thing too, and I I, I said this after Moose faced Omega. Every time I watch oh, Moose, man. every time mm-hmm. I watch Moose, he surprises me, um, and it's solely because I don't watch him enough. And it's just one of those things where, like, it's, it, he he he, he can't so draw you good. in. He can't draw he's you in. Right. So good. Here's the thing: he, really he can't is. sell you on a match, comp. He can't. And I'm not trying to be rude. Like, he has a tough time on the mic, and he can't sell you on a match. You know, the, the stuff he was doing with Alexander and showing up to the house, that's great. But that's all fluff that needs to be done for him because he can't get in the ring, grab a microphone and sell you on a match, which sucks. Because once the bell rings, he's so athletically gifted and good and just fucking intense. He's the complete opposite in the ring of what he is on the mic. Give the guy a mouthpiece, maybe. I don't know what to do with him, but... They need to figure it out because he's grown on in the last I I saw him in Ring of Honor years ago, I think. And yeah. I was like, this kid sucks. Like ex, ex, yeah. you know, you hear ex football player 100%. and all these stats, and you see him, and you're like, What? 100 percent What? And now in the last in the last year, he is probably the most improved wrestler in the industry. Yeah, he, he's fucking he, awesome. Yeah, he he I I agree with you. I think they need to get him a mouthpiece, uh, but because He's just so good, and I I did laugh. My girlfriend said it she, after they did the whole. Um, I think I can't remember. If it was a trash bin or or a hot dog stand or something. But he got like mustard on his fan, yeah. and she's like, "I don't know if white was the right choice." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I don't think so That's either." Fucking awesome. See, I I monster <laughs> ball sad. was probably my second favorite match on the card. Mm-hmm. Um. The main event was my favorite. But before we talk about the main event, I really want to just briefly touch on the Impact Originals versus Honor No More. Because I, I probably bailed out on this one. I'm not gonna so lie to you. This just on thing. paper, this one makes and I like these guys. It's just it's way too much for me. Go ahead. So I like first off, I'm a sucker for um mystery uh people. Like Same. who's who's oh, gonna yeah. be I, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but like when you look at the like when I look at the names on the in this match, I'm a fan of a lot of these people. I'm a Me fan too. of Saban was the first guy I I really took to in TNA. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I'm a fan of all this, and then like uh-huh. I've met and talked to a lot with Matt Taven and Mike Bennett. So like I though I'm like I really love those fucking awesome. people say I've I look like Eddie Edwards and he's always been somebody who I he's always been yeah. one of my top favorites in wrestling. And like mm-hmm. before they revealed it was Davey Richards who I like the same pop fucking for AMW. Awesome. Same pop for AMW. Yeah that I love Richards pop me man. But and like, I've been seeing him in MLW and saying, like, why isn't he showing up? And it, it didn't even fucking dawn on me. It, like, it, it, it was clear as day. Like, it was fucking right. layup. Like, his – his Davey Richards and Ring of Honor as world champion with doing the stuff with uh, Eddie Edwards, but also doing the stuff with Kevin see, Owens. Yeah, I didn't see any of that. Dude, his okay, stuff yeah, with Kevin Owens was so good. It was so awesome. good. And the build to it was great. It, everything about his cool. feud with Kevin Owens was great. But I was like, before that, leading into that match, my girlfriend was like, oh, who do you think it would be? And I was like, I was like, if it was Samoa Joe, that'd be amazing. If it was Jay oh, wow. Lethal, that would be amazing. Um, 
but if it's Jay Lethal, I want Black Machismo. I don't want Jay Lethal. I want Black Machismo. Right. Yeah. Um, exactly. You want something. And she's like Christopher Daniels. I was like, if it's Christopher Daniels, I'll be fine with that. I don't want that. You know what I mean? Like Christopher yeah. Daniels would have been great. Yeah. He's one of the godfathers of the X Division, but he wasn't somebody I wanted to see. If if uh, Jeff Hart, Jeff Jarrett, excuse me, didn't sign with WWE recently, I would have said Jarrett. Jarrett would have been great there. Um, I would have my fucking TV out the window. Uh, <laughs> I would, I'm sorry. I, I've... If it was Jeff Hardy, I would have thrown my TV out the window. Um, I, you know, yeah, the biggest Jeff Hardy guy in the world, but fuck him. So no, I, I I've never been that. a Hardy fan, either one of them. But anyway, uh, he was literally um, at one point one of my all-time favorites. But I'm just saying, fuck him. So no. good. Uh, but it, so for it to be Davy Richards, and I feel like both Davy and Eddie were so vital to TNA at a point when they were on life support or supposedly on life support, like when you had. Eddie Moose fell into started to get traction. Davey, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre, um, LAX, um, mm -hmm. Penta and Phoenix, like that kind of that like life. You had Michael Elgin, you had Brian Cage, you had uh, Ethan Page. Like that era of TNA gotcha. was really like the uh, those were like the unsung heroes. So to bring Davey back in that spot really like paid homage to uh, arguably the dark ages of, of impact. Um, mm -hmm. So, and again, and they, I'm, and I will start always off be a Davey and, Richards. I will always be a Davey and, Richards fan. It's so good to see they, him. Yeah. They start off the match and like Eddie, Eddie Bales. And it's like, uh, yeah. it didn't, it didn't, it didn't progress as much as I wanted to throughout the match. Like it kind of just fell apart. And then they got back to it at the end. I think I, I would like yeah. a little more of them. Right. I, I would like a little more of them throughout the middle the way they kicked it off and then Eddie back and, you know, slipping out the back door. But um, yeah, fucking awesome. You know, it was so crazy. You motor anniversary. Yeah. I want to talk yeah. about the G1 now, oh. but oh, wait, uh, sorry. No, wait, hold on. Josh Alexander and uh, Eric. Oh, uh, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry. I love That's okay. that. Match so I don't much. have much. I don't have much on it. So I, I was going to let you slide on it, but uh, I was more invested on what was going to happen after love Eric young. Great for him that he got this impact is very good at making you feel like maybe there's another ball to drop when they have a match like this that kind of comes out of nowhere. And it was given Eric Young his moment, and that's great. But then the match was good. It was exactly what I thought it was going to be, a very solid match between two of the fucking best workers in the locker room and, you know, they're probably in wrestling. So I love Eric Young, and I really like Josh Alexander. Go ahead. I love that match. Um Props to jo I, I, Josh Alexander is another one kind of like Moose where every time I see him wrestle, I'm like, oh, this guy's really good. I just have no exposure to him. Mm. And um, I'm I not love... sold on him as the main guy yet, to be completely honest. So that's fair. Yeah. I think it, so. So yes. I think uh, real quick while it's in my head, <laughs> NXT champion, he would fucking flourish and this is weird to say because he's a perfect impact guy something about him being impact champion right now doesn't hit does not hit with me and every time i see him I'm like man i would kill to see him over braun breaker as nxt champion right now that's the best way i can put josh alexander i don't know if that makes sense but I, so i, yeah. I kind of get what you're saying here's so i loved his tributes to tna in his gear yeah his the mm -hmm. singlet was after kurt angle Knee pad after Samoa Joe and another knee pad cool. after AJ Styles. Awesome. I love that shit. I feel like after he drops the belt to whoever, Eddie Edwards, Sammy Callahan, Moose, one of them, yeah. more than likely in my opinion, just having no exposure to impact now. Um, but he, I feel like he's going to be one of those people that when his title reign is over, people go, oh, he was a really good champion. Yeah. You know what I mean? In the moment, mm -hmm. I could give or take. But after the fact, that's when people are going to be like, oh, no, Josh Alexander is a great champion. Um, so. Uh, and the other thing, too, is he might not 
Impact might give him this run and then never he never touches it again. You know I have, what I, I mean? I have a feeling that's where it's headed. Yeah. And like if that's the case, I think he probably has still a good run. I don't know. I've I've only watched one match and it was that one. You know what I mean? Um, He's had incredible matches all all year. Like throughout the throughout the pandemic era, he was he was the savior of of just wrestling in general. Like every time he stepped in the ring, you forgot there wasn't fans in attendance. That's right. how intense this motherfucker is. Like I would forget that people weren't cheering for him. Right. That's how good he was. Like that's what opened my eyes to Josh Alexander. Anyway, here you have. So I watched. So my exposure to Josh Alexander was him teaming with Ethan Page. Um, Fucking awesome! Which I love them as a tag team. I really did. The North, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I was kind of bummed out when Josh didn't join Ethan. Um, For the best. Right. 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 Hindsight. Hindsight. One hundred percent. Yeah. But like, I wish they stuck together. But that's just like. Me too. The fan of me, whatever. So no, I agree. The but North I, I, I think awesome. this, I feel like this is going to be a situation where his title reign will look better in hindsight than on screen right now. And that's I kind of a saying. sucky thing because, like, you want to be recognized yeah. in the moment. You know what I mean? But, like, I don't know. I'd I rather mean, be I recognized mean, at all than not at all. Listen, man, bro, I mean, I don't want to get into it too much, but, like, Bret Hart's first title run. Like, kind of the same thing. Like, you know what really? I mean? All Not right. a lot of shit. Sure. For me, yeah. All right. But, I yeah, again. Um, all right. We touched on New Japan Dominion. We touched on the return of Kushida. We've touched on Slammiversary. Let's get to the, the event that everyone's talking about. We've had people on Jobberknocker already talk about it, but now it's our turn. It's the true. It's the oh, real Jesus. fans' turn now, boys. I should have drank. A, I should have drank a Red Bull. I don't know if I'm ready for this. All right, let's go. All right, now. Do you want to run down the card first, or and I then know, give oh, our well, opinions, sorry. or do you want to give your thoughts and then I'll give my thoughts? I think I sent the card to the group chat. I think it's the only place I have it. So let me. So I have the card here. in front of me, but there also has yeah. been a change to the card. Oh um, no! No fucking surprise there. So, Tomahar- Tomaharu Ishii has been injured with a knee injury. I just almost knocked everything fucking over. <laughs> Are you? S- I literally, when I did that, I caught the fucking wire cable of my microphone. I. Uh, no he way. He has been replaced with Clock Carners. Okay. Uh, All right. So, My boy Clock. <laughs> yep. Your boy. But yeah. That not your a great boy replacement. Of two months. <laughs> <laughs> not a great replacement. I'm going to say no, that, but not uh, at all. But it, how bad but is his injury for Ishii? Is the real it, question? It's bad enough to take him off the show. You say it was um, knee patella? Yeah, it was his knee. He's also he tear like it. Two hundred years. I old. I know. He's like what forty eight. Yeah, Fuck. he's something like that. Yeah. Where was he? he where was he? Oh, that's Suzuki. Where he was in the was he? the pan- he was in the All Atlantic match, the, the oh, All fuck. Atlantic Championship. So here's so okay. Oh, right, before we get into yeah. the card, I'm not even gonna look at it. I'm just gonna follow your lead. Everything. I'm not even gonna look at the fucking card. I okay. can't even look at that. It's way too much. You are clearly upset. <laughs> I want to be the voice of positivity here. Uh, please, because I fucking need it. I but before I need you to get, uh, I need you to get your negativity out. So I have given I give you the floor. How do you add Okada at the last fucking minute and, st- and make the card fucking worse, Conway? How? How do you do that? What are we doing, Tony? Like when I heard the Rainmaker's music, I'm like, like a quick second, I'm like, oh shit, Okada. Wait, what the fuck is gonna happen here? Absolutely nothing. A big steaming pile of dog shit in the middle of dynamite. Like at least drop it at the end of the show. And what do you give us? Chris fucking Jericho and 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 the guys from NXT that used to do backstage segments closing out your fucking biggest go home dynamite of all fucking time. <laughs> okay. You good? Deep breaths. Goose faba. Okay. How do you do Wusa? I don't even know. So, Go ahead. Okay. So I will Go give ahead. you 
<laughs> that 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 ba- that that stuff at the end where Tanahashi and Moxley are just staring, jabbing at each other, and everybody's fighting around was a cluster. I will give you that. Okay. Before I give you all my positivity, I have to say one thing. I that tag match did not give me a good feeling going into Forbidden Door for Tanahashi. Now I will be very clear about this. I want Tanahashi to beat Moxley. I will. I that's that's what I want. It's not going to happen, but that's what I feel like needs to happen. Now, well, I mean, if the whole point was fucking Tanahashi and Punk to begin with, why are you putting the belt back on Moxley when Punk comes back? He gets the title shot right off the rip, doesn't he? Is that what we've been told? So, he, so he, that's to me that's going to happen at Wrestle Kingdom seventeen. That's oh, you said that. That no, might fine. be main if, event one of the shows. But here's the thing: is that if that's our think, payback for that, then I'm okay with it. Here's the thing is that I don't think Tanahashi looks good wrestling the American style. I think Tanahashi needs to wrestle his type of match. And I think the other issue is, is that Chris Jericho thinks that he is such a vet and has done this for so long because he has. I think he's I think he's pulling strings. No, 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 no. no, I'm pulling rank, I think. No, I don't think it's that. I think he just wants to do so much on the fly. And that's not how you do things in Japan. Or at least that's not how you do things with somebody who you can't communicate a lot uh, very well with. And oh, it, I'm sorry. It, You're saying in the ring. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. I'm thinking backstage getting no, no, no. into this, this situation. No, no, no. You're saying, uh, okay, yeah, you can't do that. Right. No, absolutely so, not. And I don't know I don't the first think, thing about it, but. I don't nope. think Tanahashi looked as good as Tanahashi should have looked going into Forbidden Door. I put a lot of that on Jericho. I, I Not so much Archer because I think Archer knows how to work. Japanese style because he di- he's done it for so long. And he should have stayed grounded. He should have stayed grounded. So it's just like I don't think Jericho's as good as he thinks he is anymore. Um, he's a fucking so lunatic. I, I know. So I'm very worried for Tanahashi going into Forbidden Door. Now, here's here's where the positivity positivity comes in. Everyone I've seen and our Jabberknocker friends are just as guilty. Everyone's going, everyone's saying, ah, this show sucks. This show's going to suck. This show's in as good as it could be. All this other stuff. And and it's all armchair quarterbacking. But you guys have to remember that CM Punk is hurt. Daniel Bryan's hurt. Adam Cole up until is probably still hurt, but will be fine for the show. Um, they're like, you there, but at the like, there's people on AEW side who are hurt that would be in that would make this card better, but got hurt. And the other thing, too, is is that, and I touched on this a little bit before, is that New Japan has been hurt, are, are like a scorn lover, where like they've been broken up with so many times for dumb reasons and have been cheated on so many times that every new relationship they go into, they get very cautious. The only Uh, relationship that they've had that have, has been good to them is CMML. No, no, no. TNA was not good for them. No, no, no. Sorry. I I don't know anything about it. I thought it was. No, TNA put Okada in, um, TNA made Okada look like, um, who's the green Hornets partner. Oh, yeah. They made him look like Kato. Like, yeah, like, you can't tell me, like, don't get me wrong. It was Bruce Lee, though, right? <laughs> Sorry, Dad, yeah, it doesn't but, matter. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Yeah. He's a, he was a jobber. I don't even remember who was the I Green know. Hornet for to his Kato. Like, and you do that with right. the greatest wrestler in New Japan of the last 10 years, Kazuchika Okada. Like, you can't tell. Like, I get there it. are I get good it. Okay. things. Stu- there's good things that TNA did for New Japan, but at the same time, like, they, it was a lot of miss opportunities so see- there. Gotcha. So their best uh, relationship was CMML? Yeah, is... out of Mexico. Out of and, Mexico, okay. And probably um, Rev Pro out of the UK. Okay. okay? But you, I don't blame New Japan for giving us or, or kind of possibly, because we'll never know the backstage. We will never know the no. politics. Obviously not. 
so, but if you were to tell me that New Japan strong armed Tony Khan into booking a four way with Jay White, Kazuchika Okada, Adam Hangman, or Hangman Adam Page, and Adam Cole because they didn't want Okada versus Page or Okada versus Cole or Jay White versus Page or whatever. They they didn't want that situation. Yeah, I don't blame them. But here's the thing. When I look at this card, that match is probably going to steal the show. Okay? I understand that people don't like four ways to a certain degree. But, like, this isn't going to be a cluster. Okay? You have... You have... Two, you have two of New Japan's best wrestlers. You have two, three out of the four of them are the top ten wrestlers in the world right now. So, like, explain to me how this is going to be a bad match. Like, and it's, not I, the, it's, it's not the match. It's not the star power. It's how they fucking built to it. Right, but it, I said this to you before. You don't need to build this card. This show I sold get, out in two seconds. Everyone's gonna that. buy it. You could have just been. These people are gonna be on the show, and everybody. Would I know like, you can yeah, just okay, drop it, and, sh- and then we're gonna yep. watch it. I get it. Yep. So, so then just do that. You know what? Then just, just then just do that because I would have loved a lot of it. Fucking, I just they should have just dropped it. They should have just dropped this fucking show out of nowhere and said, "Hey, surprise!" Instead, oh, it's forbidden door. Forbidden door. It's all told. It's come out of Tony's mouth for a fucking year. By the way, by the way, the forbidden door got broken down a long fucking time ago for me. 1989, 1991. Like that's the forbidden door for me. This just been going on for thirty fucking years, right, Tony. But- Don't act like it's brand new. No, it's not that it's okay. But here's the thing: is that it's not that it's brand new. And it's not that it's it's just happening now. It's the fact that there for a long time, and I was a big per- believer in this. If you told me that after what Cody, the Bucks, and Kenny pulled on New Japan to start AEW in the first place, that New yeah, Japan I, was going to work with AEW. Story. I would. That's that's what's surprising to me. Uh, they okay? fucked them in Ring of Honor out of a big time, a big time. Yeah, right. But like it was, it was shitty. It was completely fucking shitty what they all did. The four of them used Ring of Honor to put on the first. Used show. and abused. Yep. And then their contract. Don't get me wrong. Their contracts came up with New Japan and they didn't resign. That's fine. Like I understand that. But, but they went there. They went in there and they got in everyone's ears, man. They, they, they said, "Hey, we got something going on." And I wouldn't be fucking surprised if Tony was Tony Khan wasn't already in the fucking back pocket because so they didn't like, put that all in show on by themselves. It's it's one of those things where like it's not that the Forbidden Door is a new concept. It's the fact that we are getting it because that's I the other thing that. too. Is that I until it's on until I see a graphic for it. I ne- I still don't believe we're gonna get Tanahashi versus Punk. Um, I Fair enough. like it's it's one of these things where everyone 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 could make a better card. I made a sixty four person tournament in with wrestlers in every promotion, and I booked that how I would want to see it. If that was to ever happen it would not come out the way I had it because there's too much backstage politics. There's too much money going around. Like in the fact that Vince McMahon wouldn't let anybody in the WWE lose probably, Mm. but regardless, well, I mean, that was going on anyway. Like Like, the only match with titles and wins and losses back then too. So the only match on this card that I, the only there's one, Two two matches I don't care about really. Wow. Uh, one of them's the pre pre show match, and I really just want Max Caster's promo, and then that's it. I don't even want the match. And then Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm. I don't need that. I don't, even, I I don't, don't even want understand. it. I don't even understand. It, it doesn't need to be on the card. It doesn't. That it has really nothing. Doesn't. Well, they can it kind of has TV. to do with Thunder Rosa because I don't like Thunder Rosa, 
But I see I like Rosa, but no, hearing more and more about hearing more and more about her, I understand why. Yeah. I don't me, I get it. There, like, don't get me wrong. I think by this time next year that um New Japan will own stardom so that they'll have their own they'll have their a woman's company under that's their, their umbrella. That's their female, yeah. That's the top female promotion in Japan right now. So mm -hmm. then we can play around with that. I also hope that regardless of what the crowd in the IWC believes after and during the show, that this becomes a yearly event. I really do. Because how much I longer is AEW? Okay. Here here's the thing. People have been saying that about Impact. Impact was supposed to die like seven times. And they're still around. So until Tony Khan has no more money, AEW is going to be around. And don't Tony doesn't wrong. have the money, though. Tony doesn't have the money. That's the difference. That's the difference. And he doesn't have the people surrounding him. I'm assuming, I don't know much about Impact or whoever, or TNA, or whoever was like, other than Dixie. I'm assuming wrestling people were involved. Who is involved with Tony Khan? Who is his support group around him to say, hey, Tony, not a good fucking idea. This isn't wrestling business. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Is Hold this on. kid literally a, that's what I'm asking. I don't know. Is this kid literally a mock running around with daddy's money? Like, the, just, I want this. I want this. I want this. I want just, I want to do this. Like, is that the, what, is that what this is? Right. But he, so here's the thing is that like Dixie Carter had Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff next to her talking to her. That almost that's a bad killed thing? TNA. That's a, yes. hundred percent. That almost killed TNA multiple times. You can't. Don't even get okay. me. I don't want to get no, down this. Bishop, Hogan, Hogan I get, but Bishop, not even Hogan. Hogan, I understand to a certain extent. Bishop, I think is Philly smart. But anyway, go ahead. No, go ahead. Bishop, Bishop is, but what kind of mind? But was he in that mind? Is he in the mindset he is today? Back then, right? Probably not. Yeah, he, he's probably he, I more. Think, I would. I think he, I've heard him say he was looking for he wasn't, I'm not sure. He was looking for retaliation. He wanted to go to TNA to get it. So uh, pro that was probably his mindset then. They they took me out. I want I see Hogan. I want to go to war again because he was still fucking mad and he was bitter and he was looking. He he was yeah. He was thinking with anger, which is never a good thing. So you're probably right there. And the other thing, and too, Hogan probably didn't help that that here's, mentality. Here's my other group. Here's my other uh, defense of AEW. Any and I like AEW by the way. I do. I'm not an AEW hater. Go ahead. Anybody, any of these armchair quarterbacks who are saying that Tony Khan's blowing all his money, he's just doing this, he's just giving his – all that shit. If you were in Tony Khan's spot, you'd be doing the same fucking thing. Haven't you, said I wouldn't. That's why I'm not. I, <laughs> I'm not saying you. I'm just saying that th there's all these people who are like, oh, if I was running the company, I would be doing – like, yeah, but you'd be – Spending your money on this crap and losing your money that way. Like, don't get me wrong. I think AEW, until they get, until they do their own version of a brand split, which I think they can do in a smarter way, there's too many people on the roster. Yeah, way too much, man. They, they need I, to utilize Rampage so much better. And, but I'm assuming but if you get TBS and TNT in your pocket, then like you're doing well. And that's, that's, that's the other thing, the too, thing, is like, man, like, like so, uh, uh, was it last week's rampage or the weekend before? They had Will Ospreay on. That was his AEW debut, and everyone was like, "Why are you putting Ospreay on Rampage? Why are you put?" Why and then the same people that say Rampage sucks. Yep. Yeah. Well, no, it was like, sorry, I misspoke. Why are you putting him on? Oh wait, no, Rampage is the the Friday show. No, that's the right. Friday show. Right. You're right. Yeah, no, you're right. So why are you putting on Rampage? Blah blah blah. Why? Are you, why you should be on Dynamite Wrestling? Blah blah. And it's like, <laughs> but you are the like you said, you're the same people shitting same on people Rampage, going dying. it sucks. Yeah. And it's like, how do you expect people to tune into Rampage and get it better unless you put better matches on there? And I agree with that. And that brings me back to just the presentation of these guys that they brought in. And I, that's one thing I agree with. Other people that and uh, the other guys in the job and arc thread like who are these guys and why do we care and they're like us like they know what the fuck is going on and to see a Will Osprey or a, Ta a Tanahashi or even Okada Wednesday night show up that's all they did that's all like you gotta give us give us a reason to to know these guys are important give us 
I don't know. Like I thought that so, was such a, in the way they showed up. Like but he, the thing he is, just is, like the music kid. He ran out. Was he in like a white t-shirt? Was he yeah, like no? In, like, okay, so he was. Here's the, he was. What wearing, was he wearing? He was wearing a white t-shirt with um. If I, jeans. If, yeah. So, but okay, but here's the thing that killed me. No, but okay. So here's the thing. This is just a pet peeve of mine with wrestling. I hate. I absolutely hate when people come out in their gear. And they're not wrestling for a run. On the I get that. Or later. And it's like, but the thing is too, is like, you can't, you don't have the time or you don't feel like you should make the time to give us a video package on all these people. You know what Bring I mean? Like, out. Bring him out. Intro they introduced Swerve Strickland, the way they introduced Swerve. And he came out in a suit with glasses on that presentation of, Swerve immediately told me if I'd never seen this dude before, this motherfucker is kind of important the way they're presenting him in a well dressed manner. They could have easily brought Okada out the first time they showed him in just his like. I feel like when it comes to guys like him, that presentation for the first time for a brand new viewer is so fucking important to see him. But I'm also. I am a little kid when it comes to stuff like this. When it comes to the, the pizzazz and the entrances and the music and the. I get it. I don't want to see Okada first time out running down with his whole fucking shit on to do a run in. But if you're going to introduce him the way they did like a swerve Strickland setup where, Hey, have Tony and the guy that he came out with, uh, I forget his name right now and say, Hey, this is, this is a Kushi. I can't pronounce his name. This is Okada. Okada. Here. Kushi. Yeah. The, here he is. This is him. And then shoot him like they do in new Japan and just, I don't know, give it to us. Like, show us why he's so important and why he is the king of fucking wrestling right now and considered the greatest wrestler on the fuck in the world. Yeah. He is, so, right? Here's the th I think so. But here's the thing is that, like... No one else thinks that right now. They're just watching every, TBS I know, Wednesday night. Because they're dumbasses. But here's the thing. No, is that's that not... Because <laughs> they're not us. That's, what you, that's, that's okay, the disconnect. But, but here's the thing is, like... Think about putting on TBS for the first time as a viewer, and this is you at 16 years old finding wrestling for the first time. Could no. you imagine being a 16 year old kid putting on AW and seeing Okada presented like them? Like, what the fuck? I am hitting the DVR button every. I, I now have the DVR button set because of what just fucking popped off the screen at me. So here's the thing I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, how many weeks have we been waiting for Okada to show up? So, it, I, but the thing is, is that no, like, I know. you can't, you can't give him the, I, and I, I'm not, I, I know it's not this, but you can't give him the, the Shane Strickland treatment because it's going to be one of those things. I could use. It's, I feel like it's going to be one of those things that like, it's exactly what they did with Tanahashi. Moxley says his shit. Tanahashi's about to say his, and then he gets cut off. You're gonna have Tony. You're gonna have Shivani and Okada standing there. They run down his resume, and then he comes out wearing whatever he's wearing. And then as soon as he's about to say something, after staring at the crowd and the camera for five minutes, you're gonna get Adam Cole's music, or you're gonna get Hangman's music, or you're gonna get Jay White's music, and he's not gonna say a word. So. I, th I then understand what, I get what you're it. saying. Then the, you, once you get that, it's then the then what, and oh, where do we go from here because we now, just blew our fucking load. Right. I get it. And it's like, why why waste my time? I'm much, I am, I thought it was a much better presentation than that because he, he came, he, the, the coin hit, the crowd lost their mind. Yeah, I did too. I, I popped he up. Did I didn't know it. It was like, I shouldn't be getting excited for this. And I they, did. Good. He, they did their stuff. The heels went away, and then there was a stare down. Now, to answer your your hypothetical, if I'm a sixteen, if I'm a sixteen year old, tuning in, let's say I've watched AEW the whole time, okay, and I'm tuning in, and now I see this chiseled, at a stone, blonde Japanese guy walk out, and I go, who? who is this? <laughs> And I have, I have the masked man losing his mind over the greatest wrestler of our generation, and 
and I and then I go, what's his I, name? See, I went and deaf. I literally, go, I went deaf. So I should probably rewatch it. So I'm and listen, gonna and literally listen to it. You have you have Excalibur losing his mind, Jr. not knowing what's going on. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to go. Who is that? And then I'm going to look him up, and then I'm going to educate myself, and then I'm going to go. Oh, that's the greatest wrestler of our generation. My apologies for not knowing, good sir. So, like, that's the other thing too. Is is I, I understand that you can't. Not everybody's going to know who you are. You need to be presented in a way that makes people care about you. Blah 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 blah. But at the same time. There's a little bit of research that needs to be done. You can't Agreed. you 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 can't be a, a lazy fan and go, I don't know who that is. I'm not gonna do any research and look him up. So and and I get me, you're right. sir. You know what I mean? You I, and I guess with me something. is with me is like it's tough to bring it back to this, but like I'll just say new so with Japan, it's like that's their thing. They're colorful, they're vibrant, they are pop off the page, just off the world shit that you don't see in the United States. So like, that's what these guys did for me as a kid, like Muter and Liger. I don't even know why I saw them where I saw, I couldn't, I just remember seeing them and being like, no, it was, but like, I don't remember like a moment of like, Oh, 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 like, you know what I mean? Like I just know that one day I saw this guy dressed up like, uh, fucking like Power Ranger, I guess, and hitting moon salts to the outside, and I said, "What the fuck is this? And where is this coming from?" Because that's crazy. So I guess for me, I wanted to see that, like, holy shit, this is something so completely different that we've never seen before, and I wanted other fans to experience that feeling of like, "Whoa, this shit, this, this shit go." I mean, I guess it's different now. Do you know all this stuff's out there? But like. That's what Japan, that's what these guys are all about for me. It's just like, whoa. And then when they come out looking like regular guys to me, it's like, fuck. Like, that was such a letdown. But you're right. It's a different time. It's a different world. And this is more of real shit now. So it can't be all fucking comic books and cookie cutter and flamboyant shit. I get it. But you even said you didn't want him to come out out and scare no, not for a run-in. I'm saying when we were first introduced. The first time we were – that's I guess that's the, myth, the disconnect here. I was hoping the first time we were going to get introduced to him, we were going to get introduced to the full package. I right. wasn't okay. expecting a run-in in a white T-shirt and jeans. So especially halfway through the last Dynamite. If anything, right. give me I, – I think I would have been okay with – not okay, but I wouldn't have been as mad if – this all finished. If this ended the show, even if they did it the way they did it and just put it on whatever it was an hour later, 45 right. minutes, I don't know right. what the time frame was there. Right. That's all they had to do for me, man. And right. maybe I'm thinking about this now, you know? So the, the thing is, is like, and again, I, I said this earlier, it's one of those things of did New Japan hold Okada off to the go home show? Did Tony Khan hold him off to the go home show? Did Okada I think there was hold a lot himself of shit going off on to the, the, the go home show? Um, and there's a lot of stuff we don't know, and it's and it's, it's just it's it's maybe one of they had plans like, of it. Maybe they had plans of a three way and said, "Oh shit, ain't moving. We gotta go. Like we gotta send right. them." Like it, it that could have yeah, been it too. There, I I will if looking at the card, I think there are two matches, maybe three, that were the original idea. You know what I mean? I think the pan, mm-hmm. I think the all Atlantic, I think the, um, uh, I think the tag match and yeah, I don't know. Like, all right, let's just, let's just, let's just do the card. Let's just preview oh, the card. You're dead. Yeah. Um, in no particular order, um, get it out of the way now. Cause I don't want to talk about it any further. <laughs> Uh, Thunder Rosa versus Tony Storm. Who you got next? Uh, probably Tony Storm because they need to do something there. So yeah, Tony Storm. I think I think it's gonna stay on Rosa. I hope that opens. I hope that opens the show and gets out of our way. Um, then we'll go to we'll have Bullet Club, which is gonna be El Phantasmo, Hakaleo, mm-hmm. and the Young Bucks versus. Hate the Hakaleo involved. 
Huh? Hate that Hakaleo is involved right off the rip with this one in really? the name dudes with attitudes. Like, I get that's that it's so a rip stupid. on what Johnny is that Johnny Ace they ripping on there? Isn't know. that what that was? I don't care. I think it is. I I think that's a shot at Johnny Ace. Maybe something dudes with attitudes. I think that was like him and Shane Douglas. I don't know. Anyway, go ahead. Darby Allen, Sting, and Shingo Takage and Hiromu Takahashi. It's going to be dudes with attitude. It's got to be. Like, I don't, I think it's Hakaleo or El Fantasmo taking the fall there. But like Hakaleo all day long, Hakaleo. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. What's next? We'll have uh, we'll do uh, Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Minoru Suzuki, Angry Grandpa, if you will, versus Eddie Kingston, Wheeler Yuta, and Shota Yumino. Now, I love that sh- that sh- uh, sh- uh, Shota Umino is on this card. No idea who he is. Uh, he was okay. on Dynamite at one point. I think either face no. Somewhere. He's been in no. Europe doing his excursion. He okay. is the real life son of Red Shoes, the legendary oh, referee wow. for New Japan. Cool. He was All also right. he he had a match with John Moxley in New Japan during uh, Moxley's first or second tour, and then Moxley took him under his wing and dubbed cool. him Shooter. So Sick. the fact that they're calling that back. The fact that we have a now improved and seasoned Shota Yumino, I think is really good. I really am looking forward to this six man, but I think, I think it, I think Jericho's going over. I think his team's going over. Though if, if I'm if I'm booking it, I'm having Kingston, Yuta, and Umino go over a hundred percent. I think Guevara's taking the fall because Guevara's a waste a of space. Dickhead. Yeah, it was fucking. Um, yeah. I got King. I got Kingston and his boys here, but it's gonna go Jericho and be pissed. Zach Saber Jr. versus who? Dom? Who you Nick think it's gonna be? Fucking Nick Wayne. Why not? Why not? Throw the kid out who? there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I'm kidding. Like, but that's some shit they're gonna do. They're gonna throw in some fucking some brand new. It's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be somebody big. It's not gonna be it's gonna be someone they want to showcase that AEW wants to showcase that they haven't showcased yet. And I don't know who the fuck it's gonna be. So but it's not gonna be who everyone's thinking it's gonna be. Who do you think everyone's thinking it's gonna be? I I'm seeing Cesaro everywhere. everywhere. Okay, so it's all of my it's all of my feed. It's all of my, I might have to block his name. I muted so much shit today. <laughs> Cesaro might be the next one. Because I love Cesaro, but you gonna put him in the black cool combat club too? Yeah, what are we gonna do? Yeah. Great. Yeah, okay. I would love you? that if they didn't fuck because they fucked that up too. No, ah, uh, seems like it. I was really excited for it too. I was okay. all about it. Here's the thing. And, okay, <sighs> okay. I think it's either going to be Gargano, Cesaro, or Chris oh, Hero. Fuck. I think those. Wait. Are the three so hold on, Chris Hero. Yep. That's cool. I would. That would be fucking. Gargano, awesome. Cesaro, yeah. or Chris Hero. Those are my. Don't three want a Gargano. Um, you're not a Gargano guy. I am not here. Okay. Not here. All right. On on if he showed up on like dynamite and was like, oh, you know, I'm here now. Great. Kind of so, kick cold in the face of some shit. Yeah, like I'm here for that. Not, <laughs> not in this spot. <laughs> um I think whoever they bring in is going over Zach Saber Jr. because I thought Zach Saber Jr. was gonna lose anyways. Uh and I'm, I, I, mean, I'm, I'm, I I'm head or miss with this kid as it is. Uh Zach Saber Jr. versus Daniel Bryan was gonna steal the show in my opinion. Uh, hey, what if, we'll get that one day. We'll get it. We'll get it at Wrestle we Kingdom. Just everything's happening. At and it's gonna be Kingdom. fucking awesome when it happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that. I mean, if they do, I think you might have said this. Like, if they do two nights of Wrestle Kingdom, I, this is you that brought it up, right? And like the yeah, first that's, night that's is what eight. They're doing that's what they're doing going forward is two nights of Wrestle Kingdom. So, yeah, no, I no, think... no, I know that. But the first, you said the first night would be like an eight, like a joint show. Night yeah. one. Yeah, I think. I which think we, that that's be fucking. Plan, I think. The Forbidden Door Two. I love that Conway. I fucking be, love it. I think that's would be Wrestle brilliant. Kingdom. Either here's well, the thing they could do is like they did this year, which was two nights of Wrestle Kingdom and then a third night where it was a Noah versus New Japan. Oh, show. that's right. So there was a random third that night. Through, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that took. I still don't think place I a week later. Movie. Yeah, that was weird. That um, was weird. Um, Will Ospreay versus Orange Cassidy for the United States title. If they gotta give Osprey I, the veneer, right? Like 
Okay, I am so torn on this match because I am such a proprietor of of styles can mesh if both people want to participate. Oh, the match can be fucking Cassidy awesome. Yeah. Is not as gimmicky as he was on the indies. It's going to be a great match. They both can wrestle. It's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. I agree. Here, here's where my backseat quarter or my armchair quarterbacking comes in. I would have much rather seen Orange Cassidy versus Toro Yano for five minutes than this mm-hmm. match. Gotcha. Orange Cassidy versus Toro Yano, two of the top comedic wrestlers in the game right now. That would have been amazing. Uh, I oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I would have had Will Ospreay, I don't know, Shane Strickland. I don't know. Give me uh um, way. Oh um, wow. Yeah. Um, yes. Who's who uh why uh Ricky give me Osprey and Ricky Starks. Oh boy. Give me give me Osprey. Why you give me Osprey yeah. and Allen. I'll take that. You know what I mean? Like there there's just Allen, I thought Allen, there were better options than Orange Cassie, but that match is going to be good. It's going to be good. Um and Osprey's going to get the W. Yeah, he has to. He just got the belt. He has to. And has he still to, he has, has uns- to uns- uns- unfinished business with Jews. He has to win. I'd be so shocked if Cassidy won. Um, FTR, the Ring of Honor t- Tag Team Champions versus United Empire. Gotta get... IWGP yeah. Champions versus Rapungi Vice. All, uh, so Rapungi, all. The only thing I know right from this one is Rapungi Vice is not winning. That's, that's No, they're fact. taking the fall. I think so. I yeah. think they're taking the fall. So, I think they're there. I, mean, this... so, I think they're there so one of the other teams doesn't have to take the direct fall, which pisses me off because it's wrestling. I you like, can always give the win back. But, like, yeah, I'm that's not, why I'm not I think a huge fan of that thinking either. I have uh, I, United I mean, Empire sounds... winning. I, since I'm an FTR guy, and I think the idea of them holding. The IWGP tag titles is would be the the best outcome of this night for me, uh, regardless of anything else. Like, if there's one thing I want to see is those two guys. And as much as I like Cobb, I'm not a huge Okan guy, but um, yeah, I want to see FTI walk out with New Japan Gold around their waist. I think that would be that would absolutely reel me back in to okay. all this shit right now. So I want you to remember that I said that there's going to be Wrestle Kingdom AEW versus New Japan because yes. I have United Empire winning and holding the belts to Wrestle Kingdom because I have right now, without seeing anybody announced, I have FTR winning the World Tag League in New Japan, which gives okay. them a shot at the tag titles at Wrestle wow. Kingdom, that's which crazy. I have them winning at Wrestle Kingdom. Okay, so I think there's a long that's play a long, here. That's a long way to go that's for them down there. Right? That's the rest Dax of the year. is talking that's retirement. Year. Like, I know it's a long play, but I think yeah. they, if they can, if they can protect their bodies uh, leading into the World Tag League, and then subsequently leading into Wrestle Kingdom, they'll be fine. Um, cool. All right, I'm with you if, on that. If I'm if I'm booking, that's what I'm doing. Um, and have Rocky Romero take the fall because I like Beretta. Um, Me too. I'm a Beretta guy. Pac, Miro, Malachi Black, Clock, Connors for the AEW All Atlantic Championship. If it's anybody but Miro, I am surprised. Pac, Pac would be the only other one other than Miro. I mean, Mal- Malachi Black. As much as I love him, I love Alice Black and NXT. Like. He's going to come in, do what the fuck he does, and be gone. It's going to be Pac or Miro. It, it's, uh, it's Miro. Miro, Miro kind of needs Miro. it. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need it. That's the thing. Well, I mean, like, when was his last big win? I don't care. Every, he everyone, like, dude, lose, uh, I, every I time people like say Miro. that, then I'm like, when was the last like time? What? I don't, I don't like, like Miro. Miro. No, I don't I, like him either. I don't I don't want him. He, the thing is, is Wait, that. Did like, you say you thought he was going to win, though? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Here's you don't thing. want him to win. You think he's going to win. Yeah. I'm not a Miro guy. I don't get it. I don't. You're not he, Samoa the, Joe. You're not close to is, it. Like, like, the thing is, to me, is like, I, I feel like there's this underlining thing of, well, 
we have to make mirror there's a feeling with tony khan and it, whether it be contractual like it is with, like with andrade or whatever the case is there's a situation of of tony khan going well well i want mirror i'm paying mirror a lot of money he's gonna look good i have to make him look good and if he's gonna lose whose fault is and, that so you paying yourself in a corner with a mirror, contract it's mirror's fault it is yeah there's okay. there, I I I think okay. it's Mira's fault. There's All right, fair enough. There's in 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 Miro's defense, it's WWE's fault because you it's it and what I mean by that is is that you build these people up through your product because you have to because you want them to look good on your television screen. Then you okay. release them. And now, and this isn't just a Miro problem. This is a released WWE superstar problem. They they either go, well, I'm an ex WWE guy. I need this spot. You know what I mean? Or, or mm-hmm. I can't lose because of I'm an ex WWE guy that got this, I get, this, and this. Yeah, 100. percent I get that. And it's either the person <clears throat> themselves saying that, or the person booking them going. I can't have him lose. He was on WWE TV and he won the United States title that one time. Right. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things that like, I'd rather you not bring this person in. And I don't think anybody should be forced not to work. But like it, it, to me, it's if, if you're not willing to play ball and take a loss, whenever I deem fit for you to take a loss, then I don't want you in my company. Now, at the same time, that could be Tony Khan going, how am I going to, I don't want Miro, Lu-, you know what I mean? Like, it, I guess, I, I guess take it. Here's the thing with this though. Anytime you take a loss in a four way match, it's not like catastrophic. It, right. But I'm saying uh, overall, even if, you want, even if you're the one getting pinned, like a loss here doesn't hurt. No, but a win, a loss doesn't hurt, but a win could go a long way. I don't think I there's only very few circumstances where I think a loss a loss hurts you overall. But, it, but yeah. it's just there's there's I should ne- regardless of of who the wrestler is, I should never have to go look at a look at a tournament that hasn't even wrestled a single match yet and go that person's winning, you cannot convince me otherwise. Mm-hmm. That is that is a non-biased opinion. Like I, like I look at the G one and I go, I'm picking Will Ospreay to win because I think he deserves to win. That's not yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about looking at a tournament before it starts and going, I don't care about this tournament anymore because I know Miro is winning. Gotcha. I see. It's you like yeah. It's like when the Miami Heat or the Cal- uh, Cleveland Cavaliers were unstoppable in the NBA because they had the super team. And you're yeah. like, why are we even playing? Just it, give them the it's tournament. in the NBA. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, I get it's that. That yeah, super I understand that. Thing. Fair so enough. That's where I am with that. I don't, I, okay. I have, I have no investments in the match because I just think it's Miro or, or it's just, it's just Miro. Gotcha. Now, the next one, I'm assuming, because we only have two left, right? Yep. Tanahashi and Moxley. Yeah. If that's the one you want to go with, that one or you want to go with. The oh, why do you want to go with the four? Uh, I mean, I guess the four. Well, because Moxley's technically going to be. They, they already dubbed it the main event, right? So we'll go the four way. Okay. Um, so there's not. Okay. I can't. I couldn't find it. But if if I had a guess, this is the one of maybe five four ways in IWGP Championship history for the main belt. This wow. does not happen often. That's the other thing too, is that like. It doesn't upset me because I understand no, not a lot of people follow New Japan as closely as I do, and and whatnot. But part of my liking of this match is because four ways for the title do not happen. You okay. know what I mean? It feels like how many multi mans for the WWE or Universal or whatever championship the has to be all the time. Oh, it's it's, it's fucking cons- okay. So like the the rarity of this type of match for the IWGP championship is part of my reason for liking the booking of this match, regardless of the politics or how it was built. Um, Just like how 
Kenta versus Tanahashi for the United States title in a street fight was so important or so gotcha. uh, new and fresh because even though we see hardcore matches over the time in the States, when it comes to New Japan, they're so far and few between. That's why up until it was probably 2016, 2017, New Japan had their first ladder match. 2016 or 17, wow. maybe 15. But in that, you know what I'm saying? Holy like shit, that's, that's been, crazy. That was their first ladder match ever. And it was Kenny okay. Omega versus Michael Elgin. Like, so when New Japan does things like this that are out of the norm it's for important. them and out of their comfort zone, it makes it so much cooler and so much more important to me. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, with all that being said, I have Jay White. I have Jay White over um, Adam Page. It's going to be one of those two. So, I mean, he just got the title, so it's tough to take him off him. But I don't see it going back to Okada. Uh, Cole hasn't done dick. In a shock, I, Hangman Page, I would love it. But I think I think it stays on Jay White, and I think it's a smosh finish. I don't even think we get a pinfall. Uh, so I, I, think, I think some weird shit happens because this seems like that's the route they go when they – I don't they shouldn't involve the fucking title. I don't. I know they have to here, but I don't know, man. I just fucking hate it. So, I Jay White with a Jay White without a pinfall. If that makes sense, it could be some sort of stupid fucking DQ or no, some no, dumb no. or a ref bump. No, no or a ref bump. Uh, no. If there's a pinfall, there's it's not gonna be, be a ref legit. Bump, I'm sorry. Okay, Jay White without a clean pinfall. Okay, so because they're not going to do DQ. Okay. As much as New Japan will appease the American audience, they're not going to do that. Not on this stage. If it was a dynamite, they don't care. The two, to me, the two people who could win this match are Adam Cole and Jay White. Wow. Because I think Okada is one of the favorites to win the G1. And the reason I think Jay, Jay White is winning this is because he's in the G1. If Adam Cole or Adam Page was in the G1, they'd have more of a, a chance, in my opinion. But they're not. So, I think it's Jay White. And, and okay. like, it's going to be, pro it's going to, it's going to surprise. I think this match has the opportunity to win, be match of the night and surprise a lot of people. Because of a course, lot of people of are going to be, be like, oh, this is going to be gr a great match. This is going to be amazing, blah, blah, blah. I think but, it's going to be but, broken up into a lot of. It's it's not going to be your typical four way. I think we're going to get a lot of one on one shit broken off into like this is going to break off into one on one matches throughout the whole the whole thing. I think does that make I'm sense? I'm interested. Yeah, I'm interested to see the first confrontation between Jay White and Adam Cole. Yeah, like, they've been there's yeah, a see, small, Cole small tension they've been building there. There has, and they, uh, Jay White took over Bullet Club from Adam Cole. Not, right? uh, not. Was there anyone in between them two? Uh, um, as leaders. So there Cody? was Cody. So was Cody a leader? No, Cody was never a leader. So I think it was Cole so, Jay White, right? Um, the the thing is, is like the when you, when it was really. It went from Kenny Omega to Jay White because there was... Oh, Kenny. Fuck. Wow. Because there was the Bullet Club Civil War um, that have that kind of happened in between, like, it, it, towards, the, towards the formation of AEW and the Young Bucks and Cody and Omega were leaving. Bullet Club kind of went on the back burner and they did the whole Young Bucks, Cody... Omega, Kodai Bushi stuff. And gotcha. then, like, if Jay White took over, and then, like, it just was like a dark age for Bullet Club, really. And, like, mm -hmm. it was just like, and now Bullet Club's finally, like, getting back to where they were. Yeah, it's finding kind of that been a resurgence. They, they look again. like a. They actually look like a legit. They look like a legit faction now. It's starting right. to and, look like and one. That's, yeah. And yes. that's, again, I agree. Back Jay, with Jay White. Jay White, yeah, no, and I was during Dominion. It it kind of dawned on me, like, oh shit, like when they were together at the end of the match, I was like, fuck, that's a crew. 
Yeah. And it looks good with Jay White leading it. And I don't mm-hmm. like it. And I don't like saying it. And I don't like thinking it. But that's how good he is that, yeah, man, they kind of look fucking legit when they're all together. And it's on – Bullet Club's more about – Bullet Club doesn't make the leader. The guy makes – the bullet club like yeah jay white being the leader of bullet club makes bullet club re- relevant again bullet club isn't making jay white relevant if is no, that no. is that a wrong assessment no that's 100 percent it and like it, okay and like it's kind of it's only not been that way a few times because like when i think cole was one of them i thought cole was the shits as the bullet club leader anything i saw with him really, there i did not like he was never really a, a leader per se Really? I don't I see. Think I thought so. he was for some reason. I thought he was. Maybe he kinda, I, I, again, he kinda, I wasn't really paying close attention either. Like he kind of led would... the the he to me he kind of led the American faction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, like which when it elite. was yeah, mm-hmm. which yeah, when it was the elite, that was kind of him. It was like yeah. like kind of conflict between like There's him some... and Kenny. Yeah. But yeah, like right, right. W- like to uh, me, wait while we. Ha- Okay. Go ahead, but Kenny. Let's let Kenny. If Kenny gets involved here, it comes out. No, nope. who's the guy he he looks nope. at? If I know, he probably won't. Nope. If he comes out, no, we're never gonna go there. You can. No. I'm not. Here's the th- here's the other thing too is that I've seen people be like, why isn't Kenny on the show? Kenny should be on the show. Why? No, but I know, and I Kenny's said that too. I know he can't be. I know physically he can't no. be. Where near being helpful. So we're not talking about him getting involved. I was just gonna say, who is the guy he points to of these four? If this is his comeback, who is he? Who's the jump off here for Kenny Jay Omega White. of these if, four? If you had that's to put a thinking. gun to my head, it's Jay okay, White. That's all I want to know. I was thinking but the same I, thing. Go ahead. But I think if if we see Kenny on the show at all, which I think will, if anything, we'll get a backstage. If I'm having Kenny interact with anybody, it's Will Ospreay. I think Kenny versus Ospreay is the money. I think money. I Absolute think Kenny money. versus Kenny versus Jay White is cool and gonna tear a house or two down. But if you want money, 100%. it's Osprey versus it's, it's, it's Omega. It one hundred percent is. Um, yep, I agree. But like, just to your, quickly on your point about Bullet Club, like, yeah, Adam Cole, Bullet like, Club, we um, when Finn Balor formed Bullet Club. Mm-hmm. He made Bullet Club. When AJ Styles took over Bullet Club, Bullet Club made AJ Styles in the sense of that AJ Styles didn't really need the Bullet Club, but the Bullet Club helped AJ Styles become a bigger legit threat. Japan, Japan. Japan made Japan made AJ Styles not only legit in Japan, but in wrestling. And I was an AJ guy before that. The AJ that left TNA Impact, and then the guy that showed up at the Royal Rumble, were two completely different people, and it was because, like, my perception of AJ Styles, I knew how good he was. Proving it in Japan made his Royal Rumble debut a holy shit moment. If he doesn't have that time frame in between leaving Impact and the Royal Rumble. His debut isn't what it is. He might debut in NXT. If he goes straight impact to WWE without Japan, he might show up in NXT. Yeah, that, I, I, I feel like that's how important. I feel like that's how important that Japan run was for him. Yeah. In such a short but, amount of time. It, it like, established him. He needed to be a heel and they needed to put yep. him with Bullet Club. So in that situation, Bullet Club made AJ. I understand that. Yeah. When it comes Agreed. to it, so when it comes to Kenny Omega, it was a lot. It was very 50 50. Oh, wow. Because when Kenny joined Bullet Club in the, when he, when he was in the juniors, Bullet Club made Kenny. And then Kenny returned the favor by, gotcha. by Kenny, the Bucks, and Cody making Bullet Club. You know what I'm saying? I that. Yep, it was I it was saying. a fifty fifty split there. See, I thought it was Okada. I thought it was just the Okada matches. I didn't realize Bull no, Club did that much for him. It it, it was okay. really like because like Kenny before joining joining Bullet Club was a middle of the pack face in wherever he went, except for DDT. DDT he was he was the top guy there with Coda, but in New Japan okay. he was just a middle of the pack. <laughs> DDT is a promotion. What is DDT? Yeah, DDT is a promotion. Um, 
if you ever see the clip of Kodai Ibushi wrestling the blow up doll or yes um, yeah I've seen that um the very overweight not very overweight the overweight very flamboyant uh wrestler Dino Dai uh Dino Dasuki, I think his name is. Okay. But he's like he's like very flamboyant, very um um uh, very I don't know what the right word to say, but like his finisher is like he'll take his trunks, open them up, put your head in his trunks, put them back and give you a pile driver. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So like so it's DDT is a very serious, but at the same time, very comedic promotion. So like cool. Coda and Kenny were the top guys there. But when Kenny went to new Japan, he was a middle of the pack baby face. So when he joined bullet club, he was a middle of the pack bad guy who became a bigger deal in the juniors and became a bigger bad guy and bigger overall because of the bullet club. And then gotcha. uh, AJ is leaving to go to WWE. Kenny takes the reins from him. Kenny becomes a heavyweight now. And then Kenny just goes on a three year tear. Tear. Yeah. He just, the, his, his 2015 to 2018, like of, of new Japan is probably are, is one of the best three year runs in wrestling. Like, because it really was like a, a complete transformation, almost like I don't want to say overnight, but no, but you, yeah, it, uh, but just the beginning and end of that tear, <laughs> like if he doesn't have that tear, then there's there he's not the, the same in AEW. If we have AEW at all, is, if right, like it's so important, like him yeah. and the Bucks made Bullet Club a worldwide thing, and like mm. so again, it was Kenny and the Bucks paid back Bullet Club. Mm-hmm. And then Jay White takes the reins, and they're kind of muddy waters, and they're kind of just backtrack. They're just a regular promotion, and like then Evil gets involved, and nobody likes Evil, and this whole thing. But now recently, Jay White takes the reins again, and now Bullet Club is where Bullet Club has been before. So Bullet right. Club's prominent again. So that's all because of Jay White. Um, so we're both taking, we're both, and we're both taking Jay White here. Yeah. Sounds like okay. And our main event, John Moxley, Hiroshi Tanahashi for the interim AEW World Championship. Dom, who you got? Tanahashi. Why? Because why Moxley? <laughs> why does it make sense? Where does that where does it make sense? So to get to him and punk? A fucking rerun, a 2012 Raw rerun. Like, what are we doing here? So, okay. And Mox was our Mox was already champ. He's already had a run. He's in the middle of Black Pool, Black Pool Combat Club. This is essentially a fake fucking AEW title. They could hand it to Tanahashi. Say, here you go. Take our belt to Japan. Widen our fucking name. Those three initials over there. Him having that AEW intern belt in Japan does a thou- does a million times more for AEW than John Moxley running around with it. Am I wrong? Like, is that a no, wrong assessment? I, no, I, I. So here's it's a fake title. It's it's little. I know titles are props, but this is really a fucking prop. Like it's like they're gonna come back, and this this title that they're using here is gonna get tossed in a fucking dumpster. So right? we, it's an so, intern title. So. My question to you then would be: If not Moxley, who would you have put in his place in this match? Yes, like Punk is uh, still hurt. So Punk's hurt. We need a replacement for Punk. Fuck! Oh, that's such a great question, man. <laughs> How is it not Page? How does Page not get a? He just lost the title. Why wouldn't this be his rematch? I don't think okay. So in, that's in the theory, in the theory of how a championship win or loss would go. So just, I again. so my my thought about that is that I don't think Paige is on Tanahashi's level in New Japan's eyes. Like I think that New Japan sees I, Paige as a middle uh, a high mid card guy who. 
AEW did a wonderful, wonderful build and story and character with that got him his run. That was great. But it did not do what it did not. I don't think it made Paige a permanent main eventer. Yeah, see, he did the opposite for me. He completely swung me with this run. I I started his run thinking, can this kid really pull it off? And by the end of it, I was like, oh, shit, he is a world champion. And almost to the fact where he's my number two coming out of that four-way. I don't think it would ever happen. He's a very distant and a very, like, odds are through the roof long shot. But I'm taking him over Okada or Cole in that four-way. And I don't think it's going to happen, but he's my number two. So before the before the title run, or even maybe like halfway through it, I completely agree with you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I just I, I liked him before that though. Like as a talent, I liked him. I didn't think he was gonna be a. I didn't think he was gonna be able to like carry a company championship on his shoulder and look like a world champion type guy. I was a little nervous for him. By the end of his run, I bought into him big time. So so that's I, why. Well, I understand what you're saying. I do. I really do. I just think that I just think that New Japan doesn't see it. Fair enough. That and Moxley works point. that style. I they I, had Moxley's Moxley. gonna work. Yeah, he's gonna keep Moxley's he's gonna been a champion in. there before. They know what they're right. getting with Moxley. They trust Moxley. I I want Tanahashi to win. Because I believe that it's good for New Japan. It's good for AEW. Everyone, wins. everyone Every, wins. Everyone wins. Because I love you that. Don't, I don't think that I I don't think that Tanahashi is I don't think Tanahashi is at a point in his career where he get, I think he's at a point where he has one or two big runs left in him and then he's going to more like one. Right, that's so I yeah, think he I, I think if he gets I think with an AEW title run however fraudulent or fake you want to call it regardless it's still going to kind of count. Like Ooh, it counts. I think yeah, that sure it does. you can pay it off at Wrestle Kingdom, like I said, or you can pay it off at Double or Nothing, All In, whatever the what the hell you want to pay per view you want to pay it off at. But I'm just saying that I think if New Japan wants a bigger footprint, or excuse me, if New Japan wants to further their footprint in America then Tanahashi needs to win this belt and they need to continue this relationship with AEW and bring over people because So you're on board. See, I, I'm sorry, you are on board with Tanahashi winning this. Is that your pick? I have been from the go. Okay. I, yeah, and like you said, it, it continues. Now now AEW has to go get this title back. Like once he has it in his grasp, like now now I am invested into this partnership. If Moxley wins, this is a fucking sham. This is a one-off. As far as I'm concerned, if that title doesn't change hands, I don't have any reason to believe we see any further shit go on with this with these two companies right now after this. Right. Right. I. I. Uh, yeah. I. I mean. I. I'd like to. That. Yeah. I, it seems like it's the glue. This. This interim title is the fucking glue. That will keep us invested into why AEW and New Japan have to continue to fucking fight. I guess <laughs> I was trying to think of a better word, but I couldn't come up with it. You know what I mean? But yeah, there's that power struggle, man. And you're gonna you need something to have that power struggle over, and it's a fake fucking title that really doesn't mean anything at the end of the day. It's kind yeah, of perfect. I think I think that I think that that. I don't care about like 
I'm only saying this because WWE did it. I don't care about the who won the most. Like I don't care if New Japan gets four wins in no. W- eight oh, absolutely three. not. No, I, don't, I I personally don't care about that. I know it's going to be a talking no, point, but I think the matches that New Japan has to win on are very few, and I think this is one of them. And it's the top, it's the top two, right? And I think that it makes more sense to have Tanahashi win. I just think, and this is one of the few knocks I'll ever say about Tony Khan. I think he's too scared to put it on Tanahashi. And I understand why. Okay. Why you really think? But even if New Japan takes off with this, who fucking cares? So, like, well, what, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, what would his, what would his fear be? Like, if you have Tony Khan, why are you afraid of him running off of this belt? If at the end of the day, it ain't so a real title. I, how often is Tanahashi going to be on my TV? Which obviously you can work out ahead of time. Yeah. Is my uh, like? Are the ca- like as much as AEW doesn't have a casual fan base? As a wrestling, as for wrestling, there's a casual yeah, AEW cool. fan base. If that makes sense. Wait, say that again. So AEW doesn't always get the casual wrestling fan. Okay. But there's a casual AEW fan. I uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. I kind of get that. So th- so what I'm saying is is more so that is there's like. For I think you mean people, I think you mean casual W casual WWE fans don't watch AEW. No, no, no. What I'm As, saying is is that there's a lot of AEW people. There's a lot of fans that watch AEW. Yeah. That only watch AEW in WWE. Okay. So they're All not. Right. So this is their first exposure to New Japan. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So to me, that is the casual wrestling fan. As yeah. much as you say as much as you can say on broadcast um tanahashi beat jericho before he's beaten this person that person he's beaten all these people there's a concern of your champion not connecting with the casual aw fan and losing that way and that's something that can be mended over time and through appearances. Gotcha. But right. at the same time, I also have a concern of not wanting Tanahashi to look bad if I'm Tony Khan. I don't want to give Tanahashi this belt, right? Have him wrestle, have him defend it. Mm. And then we have CM Punk down the line. But in the, not to be funny, but in the interim of that match, have it not live up to Tanahashi's name. Like the fear of this mm-hmm. being a black mark on Tanahashi is, is a concern of mine as much as I think he deserves Fuck. and should yeah. have win this belt. Um, so I yeah, feel fuck, like right. Moxley, I see what you're as much as I want Tanahashi to win. And I think it's the overall right move to make the safe and the the safe and also right move is Moxley. You know what I mean? You're you I feel I like, like Moxley. Like I'm I mean to a certain extent I like Moxley. Like I like non WWE Moxley, yeah. I don't know. I, I just feel I like, like non WWE I like I like Japan Moxley more than anything else. He actually gives a fuck. So I just think he that a fuck, there's he, a yeah. I just think there there is a legit concern that there this could be bad for Tanahashi. I believe in Tanahashi to make this a good situation for himself. But oh yeah. I'm concerned I would be concerned with the casual AEW fan. And, yeah. and it's not even that I don't it's not even that I think they don't want him to win or like, I don't like, I think there's AEW fans that are rooting for Tanahashi because they either just don't like Moxley or 
what they've seen of Tanahashi they've liked or whatever the case may be. But I think there's an overarching concern of what happens to Tanahashi and his his almost ironclad resume if he if he has this belt. It has to this if he wins this title run has to be done with such precision that I think and I I I there's a there's a part of me that believes Tony Khan can do that because he is such a fan that I believe he would do Tanahashi well. I would hope yeah, I would I would like to think that Tony Khan does have a head on his shoulders. I I mean, look, look what he's done. Like, I know I shit on him and I get really mad at the guy and I say shit that probably right at the end of the day, like the guy was, he's running a big time promotion and doing big time things. So yeah, the guy has a head on his shoulders and he's doing things right. I just wonder how easily, I don't want to say manipulated, but like influenced influenced and yeah like these no, guys know what they're what doing saying. man like i i feel like he's he's in there with the shocks like from everything you hear and read about i've ever heard about this business like it's not a pretty scene okay no not at all and if you don't have if you don't have it you know that that fucking like killer instinct killer instinct yeah that wherewithal to be like yo what are you up to? What are you like? What are you trying to do? Yeah, you gotta make sure know. you're not afraid to piss people off. It's right, like you're, gonna, you're gonna take chances. Someone's you're gonna, gonna be unhappy, regardless. I think and it, he comes off like such a mark. It's like, is he getting worked? Is he getting worked by everybody, or is he a so, little smarter than he's leading on? Maybe this is a big act, man. Like when I first saw him show up on Impact, like with the Kenny Omega stuff during the um the COVID stuff. And he was like doing the um like the promos on TV. Like it, it was funny. And I was like, oh this guy's funny. Like he knows how to be a character. And then as I saw him on AEW television acting the same way. And then at the live shows acting the way he was acting, I said, oh shit, like that might not be an on camera goofy funny hey look at me i'm a, i'm I'm a, I'm a wrestling fan just like you guys that's what i thought he was at first i thought and maybe he still is maybe he's just really good at it but part of me thinks he's a fucking mark and he might be getting he might be getting worked i don't know who knows i hope i'm hoping wrong so i it's weird because i think that he is such a breath of fresh air compared to AEW like, man and yes. the wwe and even wcw like he, honestly, as much as I love WCW, he is such a breath of fresh air to the business. But on Friday I, nights, when you go I, from SmackDown to Rampage, the minute you turn on Rampage, as much as the show may suck sometimes, like we shit on it. Wow, like you feel you feel that TV show come through your fucking room, and it's like, yeah. yo, I like just, this isn't an overproduced show. This is wrestling. So yeah, he knows I, how to do that. Shit. Like I, I'm not saying Vince McMahon or anybody over at the WWE, for the most part, doesn't care, but it just no. you feel the care that Tony Khan has for 100%. his presentation and his brand. And I think Conway, that's why I get so mad at him, like when he acts like a fucking idiot, and that the fact that he actually might be one because he is so good at what he does and the product he's putting out and what he wants to do with it. He's like, he's right fucking there. He's right there, man. Like, we ain't seen some shit like this in a long time. Just play it right and don't be stupid. All right, that's why I get fired up because it can be so good for wrestling. So. All right, so we've hit the two-hour mark. Yeah, sorry. Uh, wow. So I think we should wrap it up. Yeah. Um, be I think anything. this show is going to I'm, – I'm torn because I think this show is going to be better than people are expecting, but I still am expecting so many people to shit on this show. And, like, I might just, like, turn off the IWC for, like, a week. Because I just yeah, I, really want to, I really just want to enjoy the show because it's my two favorite companies right now having a show together. So you like, and me are in the same boat with this. Like, like I wanted, so, I wanted to be great. I do in every 
And that's why I'm so hard on it. I don't go hot on shit that I don't care about. Like no, I know. Wrestling, you know. What I, I mean? just, like, I'm just like. So it's. I'm not trying to be that fan. Like uh, that ain't right. me. Like this could be. This could be great. This should be and great. Regardless of what it you feel be. about the card, it there's no there's no match on here that I think will be a bad match, outside of Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa. But that's just my opinion. So, I don't know if this is going to be show of the year. Because I still hold out hope for Wrestle Kingdom, mm-hmm. but this—it's going to be one of the best. I mean, shows technically, of the year. technically, Wrestle Kingdom will be next year. So, uh, technicality, you might you might have a shot at that. Well, the, I, I see when I say that I I, I forget when. When is uh, your calendar? Yes, that. P- Wait, well, we when, get into when's right the now. PW Torch <laughs> calendar? Is it, there's not know. January to December, is it? I don't know. I, have no I don't idea. know either. I just I I to I me, guess. The, so I, you know what, for me, WrestleMania for, should be a start date, maybe. You know? Yeah, well, that's what April, I was just about April. to say. My, until you have your biggest show of the year, your your year doesn't end. You know what I mean? Okay. Like yeah. Wrestle Kingdom is the end of the year for WWE. Or excuse me, Wrestle Kingdom is the end of the year for New Japan. WrestleMania uh-huh. is the end of the year for uh, WWE. Right. Okay. You know what I mean? So like that's yeah. kind of where I am because yeah, everything resets after WrestleMania. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah, that's how I feel. I mean, it's something then you get rematch it back. Like, right. That's a whole conversation. With that. Yeah, I love it. That, maybe that's something we can tap into next time is what is the wrestling year start for us and what starts and ends, what, what resets shit. Yeah, I like that. All right. But we're right. wrapping up. Episode yep. seven is coming. That's going to be G1 focused. Both, hopefully. We're going we're gonna <laughs> to recap Forbidden Door and we're going to talk about the G1. All right. All right. Love it. <laughs> Please be good for Bitter Door. Please be good. You're gonna, I know you're going to be good. But please like, be good. We're going to be good. Please be good. Ten All stars. Right. Ten stars. Ten stars. Ten stars. <laughs> All right, kid. I'll talk right. to you later. We'll good talk night, to everyone. you guys later. Night, everyone. Good morning. Bye. Who knows? See you later. <laughs>